Welcome to This Week in Y Shorts, where we talk about Y Shorts' news and cards of the day. Remember last week when I said this? I'm done with school! Well, the lie detector has determined that was a lie. Summer classes were literally this week, and I'm starting to think that two accelerated classes was not a good choice, but hey, I like a challenge. So far, I'm handling everything, and yes, I even picked up a new project. I am making a podcast with my buddy where we talk about music stuff, and if that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and check it out. That's no pressure, honestly. It was fun recording then. I kind of do want to start a podcast about this game, about why shorts, or just like TCGs in general. But there are like a million other podcasts talking about the exact same thing. So if I do talk about that, I need to kind of add my own spin to it. Not just meta talk or like whatever the hell. I'll, I'll figure something out. Anyways, off to the news. In last week's video, I talked about how the anime set of Magio Record has a release date and how the anime set is Neo Standard with the original Madoka set and the app set for Magio Record, which is actually the old Magio Record set. And with that, we're getting a reprint, and that is going to be at the end of June. The reprint is for both the trial deck and the booster packs of Magio Record. Again, the new set is going to be released on July 31st. Today, we have the release of the key 20th anniversary set in JP and Fujimi Fantasia Bunko in English. And with that, let's look at the signed cards. Just a reminder, if you're buying into the key 20th anniversary set and if you live outside of Japan, there is a chance that you're going to be sold the international versions of the set. That set has seven super rares that are censored. I would show you the seven censored cards, but I kind of don't want this video to be age restricted or my channel struck. Let's just say I'm, I want a Yuri card. I really do want a Yuri card. In English news, Bushy Road official card stores are giving away free mobile wallpapers of Buddy Fight, Vanguard, and Y Shores. Contact your local game store for more details. I'm sorry, what? I am super curious about this. Also, why? Can't you just give me the wallpaper through like Twitter or something? Like we need to go to our local game stores and give them our business, you clever bastards. I'm good though. I just broke my phone and it's currently in the Samsung repair factory, so I currently have no need for this wallpaper. Uh, they do look really nice though. Over in Not Weiss News, we have some info on this month's Card Gamer magazine. It actually has Aina Aiba on the cover, and you are actually going to be given a force card with her photo as a PR card. You can see that at the top right, and near the bottom we have a Wickross card that is actually a crossover with Queen's Blade. Wow, that is a throwback. I remember back in the day, like around the PlayStation 3 era, they released an episode of Queen's Blade for free on the PlayStation Network. You could download it and you watch it. Yes, Queen's Blade. That Queen's Blade was readily available for everyone to just download and watch. People got angry. <laughs> People did get angry. Bushy Road Magazine. Remember Review Starlight? I forgot, honestly. Bit more Bushy Road news. We are having a product announcement on July 21st. Oh boy, oh boy. If you don't know what these are, they just talk about Bushy Road TCG products, like what's going to be released that year or next year or the following year. They do about four every year, and I do cover them on my channel, and I'll link to a playlist of all the ones that I have covered. And with that, the last bit of news is that Bushy Road is actually going forward with events. As you can see from this graph, we went from remote fights, the festivals were actually supposed to be in person, we're all moved to online versions of the festival, and now we're going to phase three, which is real life events. That is going to be divided into four separate stages. Stage one is the shop qualifier, and this will last a whole month. Groups of eight or 16 players will duel, and then eventually they will whittle down to a couple of representatives in those shops. If you have eight players, you get one representative, and if you have 16, you get two. Stage 2 will have the representatives in the shop fight it out until there's only one player for that shop. Stage 3, which will last about from September to October, will have the regional tournament where only the winners from the last stage get to participate. And the final stage will have the winners of the regional tournaments attend. And that will take place at the end of October. There are some rules here. For shops that have less than 24 seats, you will have a group of 8, and shops with more than 24 will have a group of 16. Players will have to check their own temperatures, and they have to be healthy to participate. 
Also, they must wear a mask. For the shops, the rooms need to be ventilated, they must have a hand sanitizer, and they need to have an empty seat between each player. And lastly, players can only join the shop qualifier in their region. Whew, that was a lot. Okay, so my thoughts. I am glad that Bushy Road has a system to slowly bring back tournaments into the scene. This is their whole business model, which kind of makes sense that they want to move forward with this. And they are actually keeping players in mind, and that's what I do like. As well as keeping the card shops responsible for maintaining the guidelines of social distancing. With that being said, I doubt that Bushiroad will be doing this outside of Japan. They could barely get card text right. You think they're going to be able to slowly phase in a tournament scene? And with that, let's head over to the cards. We are now being shown cards in the Fate Grand Order for the cards of the day. And we do have a couple of cards that I did mention in the past. So I'm just going to gloss over those. You could go watch that video. And with that, we're going to start with a Mashu early drop. Journey Together Mashu is a two or less climax early drop. Stock heal and she gains 1k for each character in your back row. Symbol of a Master Command Seal is a 1-1 event that states that you cannot play this card if you do not have a character with Fujimaru in its name, and you can choose one of the following effects. Flip one card in your level zone face down, heal. Flip two cards in your level zone, draw three, ditch two. Flip three cards in your level zone, blind stock three, and then you can give a character plus two soul. Wow, that is a unique event. <laughs> yes, yes it is a unique event. You could only use the first effect and maybe the second effect, that way you could play this card twice, but generally you could probably only play this card once. Because again, this does states that you need to flip things in your level zone upside down. Unless you have a card that flips things back up in your level zone, I can only see this being played at most once or twice. Anything with experience will lose those effects. Also, you lose all the colors in your level zone, so you're going to have to be relying on your clock for that. I like the draw 3, ditch 2 more than anything. It all depends on the situation, but I do like this card. Let's get some Gilgamesh cards out of the way. King that leads his people gains 2k if all your characters are Babylonia or Chaldea. On play, search your deck for a character and ditch 2, clock shoot. Battle on the Sand Dust Gilgamesh is on play from hand. He gains 500 multiplied by the total number of characters you have until the end of the turn in Climax Combo. When it reverses an opponent in battle, and if you have Battle Recalling the Past, and you have two or more other characters, draw two, ditch one. The Climax is a 1k1 and a gold bar when triggered. Last Gilgamesh card is Sudden Vision Gilgamesh, and on attack, give a character 2k5 for the turn. Yes, that last Gilgamesh card can actually target itself. So, uh, with all these Gilgamesh cards, I think we got a Husbando deck going. Reassuring ally Ishtar is on play, Climax, Ditch, Salvage, and she is a level 1 bomb. Over in Lost Decade, the set is actually going to be released really soon, so we kind of run out of all the interesting cards, but we could talk about a couple. Fist Princess of Southern Style Tsubuki gains 1k5 if you have 2 or less stock. While Demon Lord Lilith is a drop search and on attack, top check your deck and either keep it there or mill it. Skewer Professor Dalward gives the 2-1 Vanilla Demon Hunter Argento a soul and once per turn, when you play the 2-1 Vanilla, you blind stock. Let's Patrol is a 1-1 event that states top check 4, add a character, mill the rest and send this to your memory. And at the start of your main phase, send this card from your memory to your waiting room. And then you can stock charge 3 adventurer characters. It would be great if you could stock charge any blue card because you are sending the event from your memory to the waiting room. But you can't, it's only characters. And I am a sucker for like, vampire demon aesthetic things, but I'm really sad that these cards fucking suck. I do love Castlevania, but holy shit, this is terrible. The Lilith is okay though. And with that, that is all the news and the cards that we have this week. Thank you all for watching, and a special thanks for Becca Bucks for helping my channel grow. And with that, <laughs> I'll see you all next week.